Hello everyone and welcome to the U.S. Capitol building where we're honored to sit down for our first ever YouTube interview with Speaker of the House, John Boehner. Mr. Speaker, welcome to YouTube. Glad to be here. We got a lot of questions from people online, text and video. They voted on their favorites. We're going to get to as many as we can today. And let's start out with an issue that's been on top of your agenda uh, almost since you took office, the budget and the budget deficit. Uh, this week, uh, presumably, you'll be voting on a $4 billion cut that will get the government through the middle of March. And a lot of the freshman GOP lawmakers have suggested that around $61 billion could be cut this year. Tony from Indiana asks, let's get to our first, here we go. So you cut $61 billion from the federal budget. Thank you. However, I did the math, and it's like paying $17.61 against a credit card debt of around 50 k The monthly interest is about $750. What's the plan to get truly serious about this? Well, we've been in the majority now for all of seven weeks, and uh, this is the first big step. Uh, we've got to come to an agreement uh, with the Senate on a long-term plan to fund the government through September 30th. Uh, but here in the next four to six weeks, uh, we'll begin to unveil our budget uh, for the next fiscal year. The president had an opportunity with his budget uh, to take recommendations from his own Deficit Reduction Commission, uh, but he did none. Uh, we will not walk away from the big issues uh, that face our country. Uh, we've got to deal with the big entitlement programs because that's where the money is. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. It wouldn't affect anyone over 54 years of age, uh, but for uh, younger Americans, uh, they want us to deal with this problem uh, because uh, it's, the programs are unsustainable and unaffordable. You know, a lot of people wrote in with their suggestions on programs that they would like to see cut or they'd like to hear your feedback on. Let's go through sort of a YouTube speed round where we'll, we'll go through a bunch of cuts people suggested. You say keep it or cut it. All right. And maybe just a few sentences as to why you think that. The first one's a video. My name's Jacqueline Payne. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And my question is, why, when the United States already has an inferior education system, does the federal government cut Pell Grants and other education funds uh, in order to save money for the budget, in order to achieve budget cuts? So education. Well, we made some changes to the Pell Grant program uh, in our uh, continuing resolution. In the President's budget submission, he made some changes to the Pell Grant program. We have to remember, we're broke. Uh, we want these programs to work, but they have to be affordable. Uh, and I think uh, the changes the president suggested and the kind of changes we've made uh, would be in the reasonable common sense area. So education, cut it or at least cut some of it, cut some of the funding that's out there. Well, there were some extra funds given in to Pell Grants on a temporary basis. Uh, the temporary time is up. Uh, and frankly, we think having a, a reasonable amount of money to help students get through college is the right thing to do. Uh, but again, what's the reasonable number? Great. Next one, keep it or cut it. This one's from a, a citizen in Arkansas. I think it's great that we're cutting spending, but why not trim the defense budget? Why do we need 50,000 troops in Germany? Why do we need troops in over 100 countries? Well, I think every agency of the federal government uh, has waste, and we ought to go find it. Uh, but when it comes to uh, the defense budget, we need to understand while we, we ought to be finding waste there, uh, our number one obligation to our citizens is to keep Americans safe. Uh, that's why we have a strong defense. That's why we have troops around the world mm -hmm. uh, to help make sure uh, that Americans are safe here and abroad. Next one, keep it or cut it, Mr. Speaker. Will you consider ending farm subsidies, uh, ethanol subsidies, and other pet projects as part of your fiscal trimming? This comes from Steve in our heartland uh, in Nebraska. Yes. Perfect. Quick answer to keep it or cut it. Let's go to the next one. Uh, with everyday Americans giving up portions of their paychecks to keep their jobs and paying bigger insurance premiums, shouldn't Congress do the same? Cut your own pay and pay your own insurance. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. We got this question from a lot of people. This one's from, from Mary in, uh, in Michigan. The first act that we took in this new Congress was to cut our own budgets 5%, our leadership budgets 5%, committee budgets 5%. Uh, I pay $435 a month uh, for my portion of my health care. Uh, just like any other Americans paying more and more uh, of the cost of, the, of their health insurance. It's a symbolic thing, but I think a lot of people uh, are concerned about it. Oh, well, I understand. Uh, but I happened to look at my, uh, uh, my pay stub for this month. And uh, when I realized I was getting half of my check uh, because of taxes, my contributions to Social Security, uh -huh. my contributions to my 401k, my contributions to our pension plan, uh, Congress is doing its year. 
Let's move to the last keep it or cut it uh, question, Mr. Speaker. When are you going to end the subsidies to oil companies? They're doing fine without the taxpayer's money. This comes from a, a user down in Florida. Well, subsidies to oil companies. That's uh, in some people's minds that may seem that. What this question really is asking, why don't we raise taxes? Uh, listen, we don't want to be raising taxes on the very people that we expect to be out there looking for more oil and gas to help fuel our economy. If you're going to have a growing economy, you need more energy. Uh, and right now what we really need is an all of the above energy plan uh, that expands our oil and gas drilling that we can do in an environmentally safe way. Uh, we need um, more green energy. We need clean coal technology. We need more nuclear energy. Uh, we really need to do all of the above uh, if we're going to put America on a solid foundation for economic growth in the future. Let's move away from keep it or cut it and go to an issue that's been in the headlines a lot the past few weeks. Uh, the protests in Wisconsin uh, over Governor Scott Walker's stance on collective bargaining. Protests in your own home state of Ohio as well. Uh, this question is from a user, I believe, in, uh, in Kentucky. Mr. Speaker, my question for you is, with the current state of the economy and of jobs, will you move in the House of Representatives the National Right to Work Act? We should tell our, our viewers who don't know the National Right to Work Act, it's an act that essentially says you have the right to work even if you don't join a union. Well, listen, this has been a, an issue uh, of long standing around here. In Ohio, where I'm from, it's part of uh, our Constitution. Uh, and I don't know what Ohio uh, would do with this. Uh, I believe that people have uh, the right to collectively bargain. Uh, but I think it should be a fair process for both sides. And what happens uh, in some of these states, uh, the law is written in the favor of one party or the other. Uh, and so I do think that uh, uh, these governors have big decisions they have to make. Uh, they're going to have to make them on their own. Uh, but I don't believe that there's sufficient support in the House today uh, to, to have a national right So you don't right believe it's a national law. right? Do you think states should deal with the issue? Uh, that's where it's been uh, for the last uh, 70 years, and I think that's the appropriate place for it. Let's move on to a question. We were talking about energy a moment ago. A question came in from an owner of an oil field in Louisiana. This is Thomas Clements. Speaker Boehner, with all the problems surrounding the budget deficit, why does the president continue to stall the economic lifeline of oil and gas production in the Gulf and then propose drastic tax increases for the U.S. companies developing these supplies? Are energy workers second-class citizens? And when can I go back to work? Well, you know, one of your earlier questions wanted to tax this, this man, who obviously doesn't want his taxes to go up. I'm pleased that the president yesterday mm -hmm. uh, and the, and the uh, Interior Department released the first permit uh, for deep water drilling in the Gulf of Mexico since uh, the spill last summer. Is that enough? Uh, it's a start. Uh, but when you look at uh, uh, the amount of uh, uh, drilling that could go on, uh, it's vastly more than what the government will allow. Uh, whether it's uh, deep, uh, shore, uh, deep offshore drilling, uh, whether it's drilling in the Intermountain West, uh, there are permits on top of permits sitting down at the Interior Department uh, that ought to be released. Uh, we can develop our energy resources uh, in a way that is environmentally responsible. And the sooner we do it, uh, the more secure America will be, and the less amount of money we'll be shipping uh, overseas to the Middle East uh, to people who will use that money against us. The number one video question, Mr. Speaker, came from Luis in Los Angeles. Hello, Mr. Boehner. How's it going? My name is Luis. Uh, my question is, uh, what are your plans with immigration, such as CIR, but most importantly, DREAM Act, that fell last year uh, in the Senate, of course. Uh, as leader, are you willing to be a leader, work with the president, and push this issue forward? Uh, we need a lot of Republican support. Not many others uh, will benefit from this, like myself. And we want to contribute back to this country and go to school, get educated. Well, some of us want to join the military and, like I said, contribute to this country and become the best there is. Thank you. I would love to hear your answer, sir. Have a great day. Well, listen, America has been uh, the biggest melting pot in the history of the earth. Um, you know, my family uh, come from uh, German uh, immigrants. Uh, and we're going to continue to be. Uh, the biggest melting pot on earth. Uh, but we need to do it legally. And I think the American people uh, expect that, uh, that we ought to have real immigration reform. But they're not really willing to go there until they are convinced that we can secure our borders and enforce our laws. And I think once we're able to demonstrate to the American people that we can, in fact, uh, 
protect our borders and secure them and enforce the law, uh, once we get those two obstacles out of the way, then I think we can begin to look at how do we deal uh, with this problem uh, in a fair, uh, honest way. But the DREAM Act in particular is about ch children of immigrants becoming citizens. It sounds like you're saying you're not no, ready to about, go there. It's about children of illegal immigrants uh, being able to go to college uh, with in-state fees. Right. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a part of an overall immigration uh, a comprehensive immigration plan. Do you support it? Uh, that, uh, uh, not in and of itself. Uh, I just think that providing uh, extra benefits uh, to people who are here illegally uh, is against the law, and it's wrong. And, and uh, while I have a lot of compassion uh, for the fact that uh, it's not their fault uh, that their parents came here and they may have, they were born somewhere else, uh, you, you can't reward people uh, who have violated the law. You know, it wasn't a, a category that we had available to the public, but the number one question of, of any question that came in was about government transparency, uh, and it's a text question. Most votes have any question. Would you support a law requiring all meetings between elected officials and lobbyists to be video recorded and made available to the public through the internet? Tough question. Well, I never really thought about uh, whether they should be video, but understand, I'm lobbied all day, every day, right. by people who may be registered lobbyists, ordinary citizens. I could be at a restaurant. I could be stranded on the street corner. Uh, I get lobbied by everyone. Now, I think it would be a little difficult to uh, to film all of those. But what about just the, the registered meetings of lobbyists here uh, in the Capitol Hill? I don't. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm responsible for how I vote. I got a lot of people from a, a lot of different uh, points of view uh, who lobby me. Uh, and frankly, lobbyists help provide a service uh, to every elected official because if there's any issue of any significance, you'll hear from lobbyists on both sides of the issue. Uh, because you can't mm -hmm. ever read the words on a sheet of paper and understand who's doing what to who. Uh, but by the time you hear from lobbyists on both sides of an issue, uh, you've got a pretty good idea of what the bill in front of you will really do, uh, then you can make an informed decision. So let the vote speak and then let the don't vote worry speak. much about video. Uh, let's move to a question from New Jersey. This is an interesting one. My name is William A. Burkhart. I live in Burrell, New Jersey. I have a question for Speaker Boehner. My question is this. Why can't we do the same as Franklin Roosevelt did in the 30s and put all these people that are on unemployment into a works progress administration like he did, period. May have some merit. Uh, I mean, I know what happened in the 30s. Uh, they did take people uh, who were on unemployment. This is really before unemployment started. And we had the Civilian Conservation Corps. Uh, we had the uh, uh, WPA. There were, mm -hmm. there were uh, there places that uh, they put these people to work to build infrastructure project, projects around the country. Now, I'm sure that uh, some union workers uh, who b do these projects for pay would, may not think it was such a great idea, but I think it's worthy of consideration. Worth looking into. Mr. Speaker, our last question is on an issue that you spent a lot of last year fighting health care. This question is from Jason. Speaker Boehner, if the Affordable Care Act is repealed or not funded, how will the United States government address the needs of those who cannot afford health insurance? Thanks. Well, we, we in the Congress instructed all of our committees to come back after we repealed Obamacare with give us, give us the plans for how we bring down the cost of health insurance. If we made health insurance more affordable, a lot more Americans would have easier access to it. And while there are some portions uh, of Obamacare that we do in fact agree with, keeping uh, young adults on their parents' policies to age 26, making sure that people can buy health insurance across state lines. There are a lot of things that we can do to bring down the cost of health insurance, including uh, medical malpractice reform. And while that might bring down the cost of insurance premiums for doctors, it's the defense of medicine they practice to prevent themselves from being sued uh, that really drives up the cost of health care. So we believe that there are common sense steps uh, that we can work on together that will bring down the cost of health insurance. Mr. Speaker, thanks for taking the time to answer these questions. We hope to see you on YouTube again real soon. Thank you. It was great.